just realized I didn't have the microphone on, but I just want to thank everyone for joining in tonight. I thank you know, the Lord for this opportunity to be here tonight. I was just praying and going in by myself. Didn't know I was on mute. But I, I praise the Lord for your 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 uh weekly participation. How you allow the Lord to keep on bringing you to engage in the lessons that we've been doing each week. And I pray the Lord will strengthen and encourage you and empower you and help you to overcome the obstacles and the trials of your faith that comes against you, to test you. For these things only come to build you and make you stronger. And the only way we're going to overcome anything in our lives is through our submission to the Lord Jesus Christ. So, Father, we want to thank you, Lord God. For your grace and mercy bestowed upon us we thank you lord god for the opportunity to get into your word tonight i pray lord that something will be said or done that will encourage edify and build us up in our faith that you will strengthen us settle us establish your god in the faith and you lord jesus we ask you to forgive us for our sins knowing and unknowing oh god and to wash us in the blood of the lamb and cleanse our, our minds and our hearts of god from all unrighteousness and then lord god i thank you that we're cleansed through the words that you have spoken to us oh god that Jesus Christ, through the shedding of his blood, brought us redemption, that we receive it by faith. And ask, Lord, tonight that you, Father God, open up our hearts to receive the word of God, to help us to look in the mirror of the word, to see where we're coming up short, Lord God, that you would cause us to be strengthened and empowered by faith in the promises of your word, because we know, God, it's about you being exalted and magnified in the midst tonight, oh God. We know it's about you promoting your kingdom in our lives. And I pray, Lord God, that you break the chains and the shackles off of our minds and our hearts. So God, the things that cause us to be in bondage, that you set us free on the inside and help us to receive the freedom, to live in the freedom, to abide and camp out in the freedom of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to walk by faith and not by sight. And I thank you, Lord God, for every person on this line tonight, Father God, that you release blessings upon blessings upon their lives, upon their families, their children, their businesses, their ministry, God, whatever area of their life they need favor, God, release it in the name of Jesus. And we thank you that you lead us all in a victorious life that's found in our relationship with you through Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And again, I want to thank everyone for tuning in tonight. God bless you, uh, Wes and LaShonda. Thank you for tuning in tonight. I think I saw Desiree on. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in tonight. It's good to see you all each week to participate on this lesson. And I pray that God will speak to your hearts by the Holy Spirit to empower you and strengthen you. No matter what's going on in your life, if you keep on standing with the Word of God in your psyche, in your mind, your heart, your spirit, that he would begin to transform your life day by day as we learn how to walk by faith and not by sight and casting down those thoughts the enemy plants in our minds. As the Lord has spoke to us, he said, I set before you life and death, and I choose life that you and your what? Descendants. That means you and your children, your generation, shall live. That's the kind of God we, we have in our lives who loves us enough to not just only bless you, but to bless everyone connected to you. And that is a great joy to know that God loves us so much. He doesn't mind pouring out his promises in our lives to fulfill the blessings on our lives to lead us to the promise he has for us to, to, re, to achieve our destiny. That is awesome. That is so awesome. Tonight we're in chapter 4 in the book, The Battlefield of the Mind. And this chapter is titled, Little by Little. And the scripture is Deuteronomy chapter 7. Let me turn there in my tablet. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 22. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 22. And it says, And the, and the Lord thy God will put out all those nations before thee little by little. Thou, thou mayest not consume them at once, lest the beasts of the field increase upon thee. In the Amplified, it puts it this way. It says, and the Lord your God will clear out 
all those nations before you, little by little. You may not consume them quickly, lest the beasts of the field increase among you. And what this is talking about, God, when he was leading the children of Israel to the promised land, the Canaan land, a land that flowed with milk and honey, he said there are going to be some enemies that you're going to have to face but don't worry about it because the Lord is going to fight for you. Not only that, but the Lord will drive out all those nations, the enemies, the Canaanites, the Amorites, the Zebazites, all these different ites that will come against you. God says little by little, he's going to drive them out of that land. He said, but you're not going to consume them all quickly or at one time. It's going to be a process. He said, lest the beast of the field increase among you, dealing with your enemy, lest your enemy begin to multiply and come against you even more greater. So God wants us to know tonight that we are victorious as we keep our eyes on him, keep standing on the word of truth, allow the spirit of God to feed you like a shepherd feeds his flock. God said, those thoughts the enemy think that has control and power over you. He said, tonight, we're going to learn how to destroy them, which is those thoughts, the demonic thoughts that we engage or have planted in our minds. He said, we're going to destroy them little by little. The renewing of the mind will take place little by little. So don't be discouraged if the process seems slow. So, as we recognize, there are many thoughts that go through our mind throughout the day. And it's very vital to your Christian walk, to your spiritual growth, to recognize what thought is dominating me throughout the day. Is it the thoughts of life or thoughts of death? Is it thoughts of peace or thoughts of war? Is it thoughts of anger or thoughts of of compassion, gentleness, love. We have the power to shape our day as we discovered in our book in the last few lessons that you have the choice when you wake up in the morning what kind of thoughts are going to dominate your day. If you wake up with a foul spirit on you and it makes you angry and miserable and you didn't sleep well the night before and you tossed and turned so you wake up with this disgruntled spirit in you, everything in your day is going to be shaped by that thought until you cast it down. Just before they entered the promised land, the Lord told the Israelites that he would drive out their enemies before them little by little, lest the beasts of the field increase among them. I believe pride is the beast that will consume us if we receive too much freedom too quickly. It is actually better to be at liberty in one area at a time. That way we appreciate our freedom more. We realize it is truly a gift from God and not something that makes that I make happen on our own strength. So it's very important to take one step at a time to gain victory over your thought life. You cannot dominate your entire thought life at one time by yourself in your own efforts, your own strength, your own way of doing things. Only God has the power to do that. God can take your entire mindset and change it in a day. If we allow him to come into our minds and control our thoughts, God can change your thoughts your thought life in a day. He will press a reset button in your mindset and cause your mind to go back. As we talked about last week, like a computer, when you have to uh, refactor the computer back to the factory setting, when it's been corrupted by the enemy with viruses and all types of malicious malware, you have to sometimes do a reset in your system. And that's the same way in our spiritual mindsets. We have to get to the place, allow the Holy Spirit to do a reset in our thought life to purge out every negative and demonic thought that we have entertained. Suffering precedes liberation. Suffering precedes liberation. After you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, 
who imparts all blessings and favor, who has called you to his own eternal glory in Christ Jesus, will himself complete, make you what you ought to be, establish and ground you securely and strengthen and settle you. First Peter chapter five, verse 10. First Peter chapter five, verse 10. Why do we need to suffer a little while? I believe that from the time we actually realize we have a problem until Jesus delivers us. I believe from the time we actually realize we have a problem until Jesus delivers us. That's that suffering. We will endure a type of suffering, but we rejoice even more when freedom comes. So even in the process of the struggles of the thought life, trying to control and, and, and to cast down those things that are not of God in our minds, it's a process that sometimes becomes uncomfortable and it makes us suffer. But in the midst of suffering, God says he will establish you. He'll set you up. God will set you up in the kingdom in himself. He will ground and secure you. That your thought life does not dominate you, but you dominate it. And then he will strengthen you in the areas of your mind where you feel weak and you can't seem to overcome certain areas in your thought life. God says he will securely and strengthen you. He will secure you and strengthen you and then settle you. And when God does that, everything in your mindset begins to change because of the process. When we try to do something on our own, we fail and then we realize we must wait on him. Our hearts overflow with thanksgiving and praise as he rises up and, and, and does, what he can, does what we cannot do ourselves. So when we realize we can't fix our own mindsets, we can't fix our problems, our own effort, our own strength, when God shows up in the nick of time, then it fills our heart with such a gratitude and a thankfulness to God for what he has accomplished in our lives and the praises begin to rise up on the inside to give God thanks. I was reading something earlier. Let's see if I can go back to it. It was really good. It's in Got Questions. In Got Questions, it said, can, how can I take control of my thoughts? And it talks about many Christians struggle with this issue, especially in our highly technical world, technological world. But taking control of our thoughts is essential. It's necessary. Proverbs 4, chapter, chapter 4, verse 23, it states, Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. The heart includes the mind and all that proceeds from it. Someone said that every sin we commit, we commit twice and once in our thoughts, and again, we act out those thoughts. It is easier to rid our, our lives of sin if we attack it at the fundamental thought level rather than waiting to become rooted in our lives by action and then try to pull it out. So it's very important to identify what seed has been planted in your mindset and to know that, hey, before this thing take roots on the inside of me, it is very important for me to, to recognize what it is, give it over to God and allow the Holy Spirit to come in to pluck that thing out before it get grounded. Once a root is grounded in your heart, the only way to get rid of it is to pull it up by the root. You can't pull thoughts out of your mindset by allowing yourself to cut off the surface of those things. Because some things we cover up because we don't know, want people to know the life we live. We don't want people to know what we do behind closed doors, what we do in our secret closets. We don't want people to know all the stuff about us. So we tell them what we want them to know. But God sees your every thoughts. He sees your actions. He sees your lifestyle. And God says like this, that in order to get rid of the sin, we got to attack it at the root before it gets started. There, are, there is also a difference between being tempted a thought entering to the mind and sinning, dwelling on an evil thought and wallowing in it. There is a difference between being tempted 
a thought enter into your mind. That's how the enemy tempts us as believers. He'll plant the seed of a thought in your mind that's not of God. And the thing that causes the sin is when we dwell on those thoughts and then we just follow suit and do what those thoughts lead us to do. Instead of obeying the Holy Spirit to shut down the evil imagination, we engage the evil thoughts, the evil imaginations, and guess what we do? We pursue it. We quit to run to do evil, and we're quick to turn away from God. So we got to decide within ourselves that, hey, you know what? These thoughts are not healthy thoughts I'm thinking. This is not of God. I need to shut this thing down. And the only way I'm going to do this, check this out. Get into the word. God commanded Joshua, be strong in the Lord and of good courage. For the Lord will be with you everywhere you go. So the only way he was able to do this as Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 is to do what? Meditate on the word of God. Once you meditate on the word of God, he said, put it in your mouth. He said, don't let it depart from your mouth. Keep it in your heart. He said, to meditate on that word day and night. He said, then the word is going to cause you to be successful everywhere you go. Why? Because I'm meditating on the things that bring God glory. Then another point, it says, it is important to understand that when a thought enters our mind, we examine it based upon the word of God. And determine if we should continue down the path or, check this out, reject the thought and replace it with another thought. So anytime the enemy presents himself before you with a thought of something that was going to gratify the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Why? Those are the three main characteristics of the human nature that cause us to sin. And we sin against ourselves and we sin against God. So we got to recognize what those thoughts are. The pathway is going to lead me down. Is it going to be healthy thoughts? It's going to cause me to be successful and prosperous in my journey? Or is it going to be negative thoughts from the enemy that's going to, going to deceive me, manipulate me, and lead me to destruction? So you have the choice to choose what thoughts you're going to engage in. So I, I tell you this. Here's another point. It says here, if we, are, if we have already allowed a habit to form in our thoughts, it becomes more difficult to change the path of our thoughts. If you allow the negative thoughts of the enemy to come into your mind and you develop a negative habit, a demonic habit, it's more difficult to overcome the, the power of the thought or the pathway of the thought that has been planted in your mind. Even as it is hard to get a car out of a deep rut and onto a new track. It is difficult to get a car out of a deep rut and onto the new track. Here are some biblical suggestions for taking control of our thoughts and getting rid of wrong thoughts. Number one, be in God's word. So that when sinful thoughts enter our minds, a temptation, we will be able to recognize, for, recognize it for what it is and know what course to take. Vital point. Be in God's word. Stay in the word. You get the word in you, the word comes out of you. Not only will it come out of you, but the word will lead you. The word will direct your thought life. So it's very important to allow the word of God to get in our sinful thoughts and begin to allow the word of God to purge those sinful thoughts and lead us on the course that's going to lead to life and peace, the pathway that's in Christ Jesus. Jesus in the wilderness responded to each of Satan's temptation with the scripture that applied to direction he knew his mind should take instead of be beginning down the path of sinful thoughts. Jesus opposed the enemy every time he came with a temptation with the word of God because he knew if he didn't fight with the word if he hadn't thought with his own intellect he would have given to temptation but because of the Holy Spirit that led him into the wilderness read Luke chapter 4 Luke, Luke chapter 4 it talks about Jesus being led to the wilderness as he went into the wilderness the Holy Spirit led him there 
to validate his call upon his life into ministry. And many times God will allow the enemy to attack you in your ministry to see where your reliance is upon. Where's your allegiance? Do I pledge my allegiance to the Lord or am I relying on my own effort, my own strength? Am I doing the thing in my own way of doing it without God? So just like Jesus defeated the enemy in the wilderness, we have the same power to overcome the enemy by the word of God. Number two, live in dependence upon the Holy Spirit. Live in dependence upon the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is what's going to guide you. He's going to guide you. He's going to lead you. He's going to direct you. He's going to protect you. He's going to shield you. He's going to cover you with the word of God. Live in dependence upon the Holy Spirit chiefly through seeking his strength through prayer. Matthew 26 chapter verse 41. Matthew 26 chapter verse 41. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. You have to get in the word of God. If we rely upon our own strength, we fail. If we rely upon our own strength, we fail. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 26. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 26. Whosoever trusts in his own mind is a fool. Whosoever, and this is the English Standard Version, trust in his own mind is a fool. But he who walks in wisdom will be delivered. But he who walks in wisdom will be delivered. So your deliverance only comes when you engage in the word of God and allow the word of God through the power of the Holy Spirit to reset your mind to think the godly thoughts. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9 says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things. In other words, your heart will mislead you. If you're going according to the dictates of your flesh, following after your own reasonings and your own intellect, trying to make decisions based on what you feel and not on the leadership of the Holy Spirit, it says you will find yourself being desperately sick in your mind. Without the absence of God, we're sick. And it says, who can understand it? If you read in chapter 17 of Jeremiah, you find out he talks about the heart, but yet, yet he talks about how God is the one who searched the heart and, and knows everything about you and will render to you according to your mindset, according to your doings. Number three, we are not to feed our minds with that which will promote sinful thoughts. We are not to feed our minds with that will promote sinful thoughts. And the reason why, if I know that the Holy Spirit is warning about certain things on the television, on the radio, certain people that come around me, places I go, I shouldn't go, and the Holy Spirit is warning me not to do those things. I'm promoting sinful thoughts to take control of my actions because I'm giving it the willpower to do just what it wants to do in my life. It is very vital to your Christian growth to allow the leadership, the Holy Spirit, to lead you in your thought life. This is the idea of Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23 says, Keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flows the springs of life. In other words, you got to guard your heart. You got to protect your heart from anything the enemy presents to you 
that's going to be destructive in your thought life. Because you don't allow the Spirit of God to control your thought when the enemy comes to present certain things to you that you know is, is not of God and you just willfully do it anyway, you're not guarding your heart. you got to allow the Spirit of God to get in your mindset, to change your belief system in your mind. In the Amplify, it says it like this. Watch over your heart with all diligence. And that diligence is a word that means Keep on doing it. Don't give up. Don't just say, I'll do it later. You got to keep on guarding your heart. For from it flows the springs of life. Guess what the springs are? The word of God. The anointing is flowing through your heart. The more you guard your heart by keep on feeding your heart with the word of God. Allowing the word to govern and guide and control and lead you in the pathway of truth and righteousness in where? Your heart. And when it flows through your heart, it's a, it produces from the spring of life, life. So life begets life. Life is in the blood. If your body is not pumping blood, you're going to die. If you're bleeding out, and you don't stop the blood flow from bleeding out, you're going to die. Why? Because you're losing life. Life is in the blood. The springs of life that come from the heart of God is the word of God through the Holy Spirit by the power of the anointing. Keeps on flowing through your life to produce what? The God kind of life inside of you. And you got to recognize where I am, what state I am, what mind I'm in. Am I walking by faith I'm walking, or I'm walking by the flesh? We are to guard our hearts, what we allow into them, and what we allow, uh, allow them to dwell on. So we got to guard our hearts, be aware of what you allow to come into your heart, and what you dwell on, what you think about the most. Job 31, Job chapter 31, verse 1, says, I have made a covenant with my eyes. How, uh, how then could I gaze at a virgin? Job was talking about guarding his eyes. Because he made a covenant with God. But if you make a covenant with your eyes, your eyes need to be set aware on the things above, not on the, on the flesh. Because the more you dwell on the flesh, you, your flesh is going to cause you to sin. He says, I have made a covenant with my eyes. Why then shall I look upon a young woman? Then it says in Romans chapter 13 verse 14, it says, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provisions for the flesh to gratify its what? Desires. Romans chapter 13, verse 14. It says, put on. So it's a process. Little by little, every day we got to keep on putting on the Lord Jesus Christ, being clothed in his identity, being clothed in his nature, being clothed in his character, being clothed in his mindset, and make no provisions, no room, no access for the enemy to come in and out of your thought, your thought life. To gratify your fleshly desires. But then it goes on and says, Thus we are to avoid the periodical videos, websites, conversations, and situations that would set us up for a fall. So if you know certain things that you are engaging in, you have to recognize that I need to avoid certain people. I might need to avoid certain things I watch. I might need to avoid going certain places. I might need to avoid certain things that I'm so used to doing out of routine that's not bringing God glory because those are the very things the enemy will use as a tool to cause you to fall. We should also avoid spending time with those that would encourage us down these wrong paths. Number four, we are to pursue hard after God, replacing sinful thoughts with godly pursuit. And mindset with godly pursuits and mindset we are to pursue i'm chasing after god as the song said i'm chasing after god that's all i want to do you got to keep on coming to god keep on coming after god the more I pursue god the less power the less influence the enemy has over my mind to control my thoughts because i keep replacing those sinful thoughts 
as I pursue God in his mindset with the word of God. This is the principle of replacement. When the tempted to hate someone, we replace those hateful thoughts with godly actions. We do good to them who sp and speak well of them and pray for them. Matthew chapter 5 verse 44. It commands us to pray for our enemies. It says, by saying to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. That is so important in your Christian walk. Just because folks are hating on you, they're backstabbing you, they're talking about you, they're slandering you, they're putting you down, they don't want, don't want to promote you, they want to step over you, they want to use your gifts and your talents, you have to keep on pursuing after God regardless and pray for those who despitefully misuse you and say I'm an evil against you falsely for his name's sake. And in the process, you release the promises of God to deal with your enemy and God will bless you. Then it goes on. When tempted to lust after a woman, we turn our gaze, praise God for his way he has made for us, male and female, and pray for the woman. For example, the Lord helps this young woman to come to know you if she does not and to know the joy of walking with you. Then think of her as a sister. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 2 says, Older women as mothers, younger women as sisters in all purity. That's what Paul instructed Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 2. It's to see women, as the older women as mothers and the younger women as sisters. So in other words, change your focus. What Did you see what you thought you saw? Did you hear what you thought you heard? So you got to guard your ear gates. got to guard your eye gates. You got to be aware of what you allow folks to speak to you and put in your spirit. <coughs> Excuse me. The Bible speak, often speaks of putting off wrong actions and thoughts, but then putting on godly action and thoughts. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 22 through 32 talks about to put off the old self to its former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful thoughts and to be new be renewed in the spirit of your mind and to put on your new self that's created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. And then it says, therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth to his with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. Let, let, let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth, but only such as is good for the upbuilding, for the building up as it fits occasion that it may be grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you are were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, among, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. So you got to allow the word of God to restructure your mindset, to demonstrate, the love of God towards others. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22 to 32. Merely seeking to put off sinful thoughts without replacing those thoughts with God. It says, merely seeking to put off sinful thoughts without replacing those thoughts with godly ones leave an empty field for Satan to come along and sow his weeds. If you don't put on godly thoughts, and you try to take out sinful thoughts and doesn't put anything in its place. It's like, like the word says in Matthew chapter 12, verse 43 to 45. It says, when an unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it passes through waterless places seeking rest, but finds none. Then it says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds what the house empty, swept, and put in order. 
Then it goes and bring with it seven other spirits more evil than itself. And they, the seven spirits, along with the original spirit, which is eight, enter to enter and dwell there. And the state of that person is worse than the first. So also would be with this evil generation. So you got to get to the place when you clean out your mindset of the things of the flesh to allow the Holy Spirit to replace those thoughts with godly thoughts that's from the word of God through the power of the Holy Spirit. Number five, we can use fellowship with other Christians the way God intended. We can use fellowship with other Christians the way God intended. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 through 25. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 verse through 25. And so let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as the habits of some, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day drawing near. What day? The day Christ is soon to return. You got to allow the Holy Spirit even through fellowship, as iron sharpened as iron, to build up one another in love and good works of the kingdom of God. Then it says, let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. And you got a lot of people say, I don't need to go to church. I can, I can just watch church on television. That should be just as good. It's not good. It's okay. Because if you're not around fellowship with other believers, how can iron sharpen iron? You might have faced a temptation, a trial, and a test that someone else in your fellowship might be engaging in or going through at that same time, and God delivered you. Your testimony can help change their life, to help strengthen them in their weak area of their life, to help them overcome. So it's very important, even through fellowship, to have allow the Spirit of God to bring us together to build up one another in the faith. Fellow Christians who will encourage us in the changes we desire, the best of the same gender. In other words, one with the woman, man with the man. Who will pray for and with us. Who will ask us and love how we're doing. And will hold us accountable in avoiding the old ways. Our valuable friends indeed. A fellow Christian who comes into your life, who would pray for you, who would check on you, who would encourage you, who would walk with you through the toughest time of your life, through the weaknesses of your flesh, to help you overcome and hold you accountable to the things that you know that lead you down a pathway of destruction, to help you overcome that hurdle, that trial, that test, through the power of the Holy Spirit, through friendship is a very valuable friend to be in your life. Last and most important, these methods will be of no value unless we place our faith in Christ as Savior from our sin. None of these steps will be effective in your life unless you allow the Holy Spirit through Christ Jesus to come into your heart and to help you overcome those struggles, those habits, those addictions, the shackles, the change, the bondages, the imprisonment that we allow the enemy to afflict us with. The only way you overcome is through the power of the Holy Spirit. No condemnation. Romans chapter 8 verse 1. Romans chapter 8 verse 1. said, so therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who live and walk not after the dictates of the flesh, but after the dictates of the spirit. There is now no condemnation, no prejudging, no bondage, no heaviness that people would afflict upon you because you made a mistake. We allow people to put us in a place of condemnation by judging us because of our mistakes because they don't know the word of God themselves. You have to know the word of God for yourself. So even though you make a mistake, recognize what it is. 
Pray about that thing. Cast out the imagination. Allow Christ to come into your mindset, to flood your mind with the word of God, to overpower the negativity of the enemy that tries to imprison you with that mistake to put you back in chains and shackles when Christ has set you free. When you walk in the spirit, don't receive condemnation when you have a setback or bad day. Just get back up, dust yourself off and start again. Don't receive condemnation when you have setbacks or bad day. Just get back up, dust yourself off, and start again. When a baby is learning to walk, he falls many times, and many times before he enjoys the confidence of walking. However, one thing in a baby's favor is the fact that even though he may cry a while after he has fallen, he always gets right back up and tries again. What a great analogy. A baby may make a mistake and fall, but the baby got enough sense to know it's not an eternal fall. So I can get back up. Why can't we do that as children of God? When we fall and make mistakes, why can't we see ourselves in the same aspect that just because I fell down, I slipped back into drugs. I may have slipped back into alcohol. I may have slipped back into fornication. I may have slipped back into adultery. I may have slipped back in, 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 into all types of sinful behaviors. But God says there's no condemnation. He instructed Paul to write to the church at Rome to let them know his love was immeasurable. It's not going to change. It's immutable. God will keep the same love towards you even when you fall, but in the process of you falling, he'll pick you back up again. The devil would try his hardest to stop you in this area of renewing the mind. He knows that his control is over, over you is finished once you learn to choose the right thoughts and reject the wrong ones. The enemy knows the moment you get a revelation of who you are, the thought life that you should be following and governed by, through the power of the Holy Spirit, he knows it's over. He ain't got no more power over you. He has no more control over you. But when you reject the wrong thoughts and start allowing the dictates of the Holy Spirit to give you the godly thoughts, those thoughts overpower, overshadow the thoughts of the wrong thinking and cause you to gain victory and ground over the enemy thoughts every, every single time you allow the Spirit to come into your mind. He will attempt to stop you through discouragement and condemnation. He will attempt to stop you through discouragement and condemnation. When condemnation comes, use your word weapon. When condemnation comes, use your word weapon against the enemy. Reminding Satan and yourself that you do not walk after the flesh, but after the spirit. Walking after flesh is depending on yourself, but walking after the spirit is dependent on God. Use your weapon, which is the word of God, to remind Satan and yourself, just because I messed up, just because you caught me in the club, just because I, I, I fell down. The song said, we fall down, we get back up again. A saint is just a sinner who fell down and got back up again. Why? Because we're relying on God's strength. I'm not relying on my own dependability, my own strength. I'm relying on God's effort, his power, that even in the midst of falling, he has enough grace to pick me up again. When you fall, which you will, that doesn't mean you're a failure. Add that to your data bank. When you fail, you are not a failure. You're still more than a conqueror. You're still victorious because Jesus Christ has conquered all of our foes in our stead when he knew we didn't have enough strength to fix our own issues. It says, while we were yet sinners, God committed love towards us and allowed Christ to die for us because he knew we had no strength. We couldn't stand our own two feet. We, we'll never measure up. we we'll never measure to God's standards. We'll always mess up and make mistakes. That's why he sent Jesus. When we all have to accept the fact, we all have to accept the fact that along with the strength, we have weaknesses. Along with strength, we have weaknesses. 
Just let Christ be strong in our weaknesses. Let him be your strength on your weak days. Let Christ be your strength on your weak days. I repeat, don't receive condemnation. Your total victory will come, but it will take time because it will come little by little. So I hope you learned something tonight. As we come to the close of another session tonight, I pray that you add this to your mindset. Get into the word of God. Keep cross-examining your thought life to see what type of thoughts that has more influence over your life and allow the Holy Spirit to come in to change the structure of your mindset by replacing it with the foundation of the Holy Spirit to build you up in truth and righteousness. So, Lord God, we thank you tonight for this lesson. I pray that something has been said or done, God, that will help motivate, that will stir us up, call us to get into the mirror of the word, to cross-examine ourselves, to see ourselves the way you see us, God, and allow you to purge our mentalities from the evil imagination and the thoughts of the enemy and fill them with godly thoughts of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost that the fruit of the Spirit will be activated in our lives as we walk by faith and not by sight. In Jesus' name, amen. As we do each week, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you might be a backslider, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart right now Forgive me for my sins and my iniquities. Knowingly and unknowingly, wash me in the blood of the Lamb. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, I shall be white as snow. Come into my heart, God, and be my Lord and Savior. If I'm a backslider, God, restore me back to the right standing and right relationship. If I'm being father, uh, a sinner, then come into my heart, be my Lord and Savior, and change me, God, that I will live a life in the new life that's found in knowing you. And now, Lord, release the Holy Spirit to come into my heart and fill me with your anointing that I will be a witness for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, amen. Again, I thank you. If you prayed that prayer, the whole host of heaven is rejoicing over you because you made a decisive decision to follow the heart of God by giving your life to Jesus. And allow him to restore you into right standing and right relationship with himself. And I thank you for your obedience, for praying that prayer. And I believe that there will be some results and some changes in your life that's going to manifest through the power of the Holy Spirit. Until next week, stay encouraged, stay excited about Jesus, and know that God loves you, and I love you too. And I'll see you next week. Share this video with somebody else. And allow the Holy Spirit to purify their thoughts and their minds and their actions by the words that have been spoken tonight that will encourage and strengthen you to keep on being stirred up in your faith, to get into the Word of God, to keep praying, to not give into condemnation, but give into the power of the Holy Spirit and allow Him to change your thinking. And I guarantee you will live a more fruitful a more surrender, a more delivered, and a more abundant life that's found in knowing Jesus. God bless you, Pastor Cornell. Thank you for joining. And again, I want to thank everyone for tuning in tonight. Until next week, shalom. May God's peace abide upon you, in you, and through you. In Jesus' name, good night.